Shalom, Shalom, Remnant. Shalom, Shalom to the elect, the called, and the chosen, and those of the return. Sibaya is here with a quick message. <clears throat> this is Sunday morning, and I just got finished yesterday, Shabbat, teaching a eight-hour rebuttal lesson against Jediah's previous lesson about Jezebel beta males, hyenas, alpha males, and lions. He's on a rampage teaching pseudo doctrines for the word of Yah. He's on a woman hunt and he is exposing what he always has believed and playing on the emotions of our men, uh, of our broken men and our uh, insecure young sons that are being raised wrong, playing on that emotion, trading in doctrines of the world and pseudo knowledge for the word of Yah. I know that most of you will not listen to an eight hour lesson of me breaking down Jediah's foolishness, but I'm going to split this apart. So this is why I'm doing this introduction right now. I'm just going to pull out this so I want y'all to see that Jediah is a liar and that he manipulates the word and he'll use and he'll twist and he'll pervert the word of Yah, canonical books and false books so that you will adopt his misogynistic, chauvinistic, hating woman doctrine. His honeymoon is over. He found himself weak and now he's back in his strength. He says he's the alpha lion, but there's no such thing in Torah. The only alpha is Yahushua. So he teaches this lesson on Jezebel's beta males. And I say that his lesson is on Jezebel's beta males and pseudo tales, false sciences, uh, stereotypes, emotional um, and sociopathic narcissistic behaviors, um, chauvinistic and feministic ideologies. And he's speaking about broken relationships of people in the world and not those in the Bible. But in here, he uses the gospel of Bartholomew to prove a point specifically to someone like me. Though he won't use my name anymore, um, he's just going to continue to paint a false picture so that you will identify uh, what he labels a Jezebel by his characteristics of behavior. But in this, what I'm going to show you now is that he presumes to tell you through the gospel of Bartholomew that a righteous woman with the Holy Spirit being the mother of Mary, using her example when the 12 apostles, also headships themselves, um, came to ask her a uh, spiritual question. And he presumes to exegesis and eisegesis what Bartholomew was saying. And he does something in the video that I'm going to pull out and then I'm going to read it. I'm going to reclip what I did last night to show you that he's lying right in front of your faces, counting, betting on that you will never go back and read the whole testimony for yourself. When I first years ago saw Jediah's for the first time, I knew that he was a manipulator, scheming, hating women lying because all his lessons he would teach on our foremothers, right? Our righteous foremothers. Um, he would teach on Rachel and um, he would teach on Sarah and, and uh, Leah and Rebecca and Tamar. All of those women that was of our uh, race, married to our forefathers, he would pick out all of those stories where Tamar, Trick Judah, and, um, and he would not read what the Torah said concerning the judgment of what Yah had to say about their acts, that the men counted their acts righteous and that Yah counted their acts righteous because there was falsehood in authority. What Yah will do in overturn when falsehood is, under, is, is in the hands of the authority or blindness or weakness or working in the flesh, what Yah will do. And those stories tell that. But what he would do is he would stop the story. He wouldn't read the rest. And he would eisegesis and re-explain and give his own judgment. He's become the own judge of the stories in the Bible. 
Now, Jezebel, there's nothing to say about her, right? She was a wicked woman from beginning to end. She was born in wickedness. She was born in power. And she continued in her wickedness and in her power as she matured. That is what it is. She wasn't one of us. And he should have never married her. But Ahab was uh, wicked all by himself before her. And so what people are coming up with is um, uh, the spirit of Jezebel, right? But in his doctrine, Yahushua laid down his life to kill the spirit of Jezebel. But somehow his blood uh, wasn't enough to stop this spirit from keep popping up in Revelations, to keep popping up in Jediah's life, and this spirit keep popping up in every ministry that he's ever seen, and this spirit keep popping up uh, in all of you. And it doesn't make sense. So either he didn't accept Yahushua HaMashiach's sacrifice to kill Jezebel's spirit, that makes him a false messiah according to his understanding of messiah, or that there's no Jezebel spirit, it's just ways of the flesh, and he's playing the same blame game that our forefathers did, uh, our wicked forefathers did, is blame Eve, blame the woman. While he tells you, a beta male, uh, uh, that a Jezebel blames men. All you see him doing is blaming women for his weakness, for his lack, for his wickedness, for his fornication. So I'm going to prove to here right now that even in the gospel of Bar Bartholomew that I don't subscribe to, but we're going to pretend like the gospel of Bar Bartholomew is legit that how he lies on the story. He swipes up so you don't read the rest and gives his own judgment about what a righteous woman would do. So if I prove right now that according to Jediah's um, gospel that he has maintained as the true word of Yah to read to you as an example of what a righteous woman should not do in order not to be a Jezebel and for the apostles not to be a beta male. And it actually doesn't say what he's saying, it says, then what are we talking about? Once again, stay tuned. I'm going to clip up just that part so you can see that Jediah is a professional liar. And all of you should be offended that he would use the word in such a way. And he, if he would lie like that, how many of his teachings are uh, twisted, perverted, and um, deceitful to trick you into believing his doctrine? He's done this time and time again. He won't stop, but I'll keep outing him for it and to show you so that when you go to hell and you stand before your judgment, men or women, for following Jediah's falsehood, um, blasphemy of Yah's true testimony of why he came and what he came to put down, he didn't put down any spirit. He put down sin. Um, he put down the sting of death, which is the sting of sin, which is death. Y'all will have no excuse. He's going to say, why didn't you listen to my servant, the prophetess that I sent every day and every night to show you the word of Yah, my righteous judgment? Why didn't you listen to her? Oh, because the diet said that you said that women can't speak. Well, I say stay tuned, Israel. Um, stay tuned, remnant. I'm going to prove that through Jediah, 99% of these nigger brew camps, rebels, violent thugs, have hoodwinked the word of Yah. They're lying on Paul. They're lying on his epistles. They're lying on his letters to Timothy. They're lying on his letters to Corinthians and they're lying on Romans. So let's see, let's get it. Let's go into the testimony of Bartholomew and see what a righteous woman would do. All right, I'm getting there. Okay, this is gonna be good y'all, y'all ready? All right, let's listen first. Let's listen. Hallelujah. Let's go back to 1 Kings. Actually, let's, before we go to 1 Kings, Jezebel was the least of all women. Who was the greatest of all women? Yeah. Miriam. Let's see what Miriam does. Let's go to the Gospel of Bar Talmai. So he's going to the Gospel of Bartholomew. I'm going to tell you about the Gospel of Bartholomew. I don't recognize these books, even though I know they have some truth in it. There's fabrications. We're going to read exactly what he's reading and what he refuses to read. And I'm going to show you his trickery, slickery, and his craftiness again. But I want him to lay down his principle. And now we're going to get the word, the edified word that we recognize and has been recognized and given to us. 
Let's go to Bartholomew, Bartholomew, chapter 2. Bartholomew, chapter 2. Let's start at verse 1. Start at verse Let's one. look at how a godly woman, a daughter of Zion, is supposed to handle situations when men abdicate their authority. Did you hear what he said? I want y'all to be clear. <laughs> when they advocate their authority, meaning they enforce their authority, right? When they're reckoning, I'm the authority. When they tell you, I'm the man. This is how a holy woman. So now he's talking to me. I don't know if he's going to go into yet. He's going to talk about a prophet now. He's not denying a prophet. So he's trying to paint the picture that if I don't submit, even though I could be a prophet and I could be ordained and my father's 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 ordained me and I was of the seed of this and that, I could very well be a prophet. But when a man comes on the scene to, what did he say, what was the word he used? Advocate. Advocate his authority as man Elohim. Aleph, he's the Aleph, the Aleph. This is what a righteous woman, even Mary, the one who birthed Yahushua, the Aleph, is supposed to behave. Now, before I go there, y'all, it's going to get good. Y'all ready? Y'all ready for this? Y'all ready for touchdown? It's the touchdown that's going to win the whole game. I don't acknowledge these books, but I'm going to show you that what he does with this book, he does with the word of Yah. And I'm going to show you that he is deceiving you guys right in front of your face because he knows that you're not going to fact check him. All right? I'm going to prove it by the very book. I told you that Jediah does something and I showed you time and time again from years ago how he handles the word of Yah. He'll read something. He'll stop. The word that he's reading has its own judgment about what was good and evil in it. He will stop reading. Look up and re-explain and give his own feminist, I'm sorry, chauvinistic, misogynistic ideology and judgment about it. And I'm going to prove that he does it here. Jediah, you think you got to come? <laughs> go for it. Go for it. Women have a choice to make when they see their man being weak. You can either strengthen him or you can usurp his authority. You have a choice you're confronted with, sisters. When your husband or the man in your life is weak, you have a choice to make. That doesn't mean you have to grab the rip. What is he saying? He's making an argument. Who's weak here? Who's this about? First of all, he's talking about his own situation. The honeymoon is over. After I judged him by his own judgment, didn't you teach women ain't supposed to talk? be seen or heard. You submitted your wife through abuse and verbal abuse and enforcement of authority all these years to submit. She's finally submitted. Now you got yourself a new one. She put it all over you because you are weak to lust. You are hyena, right? You got weak to that hyena. She came and bewitched your house, tore up your house, but really, did she tear it up? It was already tore up. She just finished your deal. Calls her Vanna Black. Dress her up like the queen. You're taking her son now and training her son to hate women because he probably already hate women. I'm going to show you what Jedi is doing with this little cuss of a bus in the middle. Right? She going to regret this in the end. The honeymoon's on. You hear her talking in the background? Did you hear her voice? Anyone that listened to it was just hard to listen to. You don't hear her voice one time. She mad. She's not giving it to him. He even talks about this, holding back now, that I'm supposed to not do the word of y'all and assert my authority, because you. No, he mad now. He weak. He got weak. You got weak, Nadia. But that's your judgment. It's not mine. I said you was weak to wickedness and fornication. That's what you brought in your house. You brought the Jezebel spirit back. So if you brought the Jezebel spirit back in your house and a woman came in and used sex, because you were weak to fornication in your house and lost authority in your house, which he already lost authority before she came. Right? He never had authority. Because if you got authority, you don't have to beat nobody into submission. He was always weak. Now he mad. She mad. 
And Casita back there just laughing behind the camera like, yeah, you can get yours now. You wanted them. I dealt with this for how many years? He beat the store out of me. It's your time. So he's really talking about his new whore. But on the same thing, he's doing a Yoshi, right? He was mad with his wife. I called both of them out. And now he's mad with me because I prophesied <laughs> their wickedness, right? All right, he's mad with me. So he said a righteous woman is supposed to submit. And emasculate. When her man is weak. Did Deborah do that? Did Abigail do that? He did recognize Ab Was she supposed to submit when her man weak or wicked? We supposed to submit because if they in a weakness, how could they assert authority? If what weakness is he talking about? If they weak, what they weak to? The flesh. They weak to the flesh. And you ain't supposed to follow nobody in their weakness. What kind of foolishness is that? Lying or not? Uh, she, maybe, maybe, but he's brute. Uh, what's happened is that she's going to lose her son, though. He gone. He over here promising him his throne and his kingdom against women and against his own mama. First of all, him and his mama was feuding before they met Jediah. He was mad with his mama for sleeping with Jediah. That wasn't her husband in the first place. It was all over the Facebook. But Jediah came and what? Offered him, bribed him with power, money, and authority. And he's teaching him falsehood. He's teaching him this Balaam male. And I'm going to show you the word. But let's go on. Let's finish this. Because he had a moment of weakness. Does that mean you're emasculating him? Because most people do. Most women who are not in the Ruach do. He said most women are not in the Ruach too. Too. If you're not in the Ruach, she's not in the Ruach. What are we talking about here? Shut your mouth. What, what is that? What is that? You talking about she's not in the Ruach too. If she was in the Ruach, because you just said, let's see what a righteous woman would do. That means she in the Ruach. She birthed the Ruach. What are you, what are you talking about? He talking about his own relationship. Implying me in the middle. Once again, I'm not your man. And I'm not your woman. I ain't your dog. I ain't your, your, your hyena, right? I'm none of that to you, Jada. You're not my authority. You're not my older brother. I'm your older sister, and I'm going to continue to spank your fat behind. I ain't your girlfriend. I know you was attracted to me. I know you wanted me once. So I mean, you, you figuring out that I'm, I'm bigger than you, <laughs> right? It don't matter, right? You want to talk about people's bodies and stuff like that? You is a nasty dog. You're not talking. He just said weak but why he using the word weak and then he said you're not in the spirit too so weak means that you don't have the ruach hakadosh you don't follow nobody that don't have the ruach hakadosh nobody you have no authority if you are not in the ruach hakadosh but the godly women this is the example go ahead that's what Bartholomew, excuse me, Bartholomew, chapter two and one. He mad, he like Scar right now, right? Woo! Now the apostles were in the place with Miriam, Cain, all 12 of them. And Bartholomew came, for the 11 at this point, go ahead. And said unto Kepha and Andre and Yochanan, let us ask her that is highly favored, how she conceived the incomprehensible, or how she bare him that cannot be carried, or how she brought forth so much greatness, but they doubted to ask her. Bartama, therefore, said unto Kepha, Thou that art the chief and my teacher, draw near and ask her. They were afraid to ask her, How did you conceive Jehoshua? Mm -hmm. Until it was born of the Ruach HaKodesh. How did that actually happen? They were afraid to ask her. That's kind of a personal question, <laughs> to say the least. Look at, look at his implication. But Kepha said to Yochanan, Thou art a virgin and undefiled and beloved, and thou must ask her. So Kepha was like, No, you ask her. And as they all doubted and disputed, Bartamai came near unto her with a cheerful countenance and said to her, Thou that art highly favored, the tabernacle of the Most High, unblemished, we, even all the apostles, ask thee to tell us how thou didst conceive the incomprehensible, 
or how thou didst bear him that cannot be. I want to pause right. I want y'all all to notice what he's doing. You see how he's zooming in and he's very keen on what he's going to allow to show. I'm going to show you just so, because he knows that y'all not going to go get the book and y'all not going to finish reading. He's going to do what I just showed you he do. Read half of it. Zoom it away so you can't see. He do it with the old classic preachers do. Everybody open your book, chat, da, 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 da. and he read the first line knowing y'all not looking down, right? He read the quote. He said, close the book, and he start preaching on it. That's what you died, the old classic teacher, uh, preacher trick. He going to close the book. He going to swipe it away so you can't read no further and then make up what it say. Watch this, y'all. How many times have I showed Jediah has done that? That he's got it busted time and time again and lying on the word. And he knows that he's lying. I'm going to continue to show you. He did the same thing with the name of Yah. Let's go. But Miriam said unto them, ask me not concerning this mystery. If I should begin to tell you, fire will issue forth out of my mouth and consume all the world. Man, this is a secret of creation. This is a great mystery you're asking. This is spiritual. Hide it. He's implying that whatever's being asked of this woman is a high mystery in spiritual knowledge. Like he's, he's, he's how do I say? It? He's, he's showing the difference between how I supposed to act versus Mary because he knows now that I got mysteries, high knowledge of the creation and the it, right? He knows this now. He's, he don't know it. He would never ask and humble himself like as in a Peter, if you want to believe this story, right? If you really want to believe that, that after Messiah's death during the 40 days, Peter, Peter and 11 apostles, when they didn't even believe her, uh, the uh, other Mary's first time, going to ask her after all this time when they knew the prophecy, how did you conceive? What's the mystery of how you conceived him? That's ridiculous. That's ridiculous. If very disrespectful. No, they wouldn't do that. Okay, but if you want to believe this, still. But they continue yet the more to ask her. Yes, more. And she, for she could not refuse to hear the apostles say, let us stand up and pray. And so they said, okay, well, let's pray. Let's go. She said, let's pray. What did she do? She took leadership. <laughs> she took leadership and said, let's pray. Okay, watch this. And the apostles stood behind Miriam. But she said unto Kepha. The apostles did what? Stood behind Miriam. What does that mean? They started what does that mean? Males. They started becoming beta males. They started becoming beta males. <laughs> this is abusive, y'all. This is abusive to men. You poor, you poor little boys. You poor young boys. The apostles began to become, they were, if that's the case, they were beta men the moment they was afraid the whole time. And if you go before, they were already talking to Yahushua. Why didn't they ask him? Why didn't they ask him? Because that would have been disrespectful. Give us the secret of Mary. They already had the secret. Be celibate <laughs> and pure. Become a chaste virgin like she was, undefiled. They were already. What are you talking about? I don't know if this was before or after. I'm not sure, but it's supposed to be in the 40 days, right? Whatever. But they talking to Yehoshua in the chapter before. This don't make no sense. When he's supposed to have appeared 40 days and explained to them all the mysteries or whatever of him. Why are they asking her? If he was there visiting them. This don't make no sense. And if that's the case, then they become betas. Which is this foolishness, y'all. It's wicked. So the 12 apostles became beta when they stood behind them. You be. But that's blasphemy in itself, too. It is blasphemy. They're going to judge. Peter Paul, I'm not Paul, but the apostles are going to judge what he's talking about. Oh, yeah, they're going to judge it. Oh, yeah. He lying on Paul. He lying on Peter. He lying on Messiah. He lying on Howard. He lying on Adam. He lying on Adam. He said Adam became beta. What? This is dangerous to teach men such things. And the word don't say that. The word don't say he's implying it. He's lying on the word. Now watch this. Look, he looks so proud. Look. 
He's using wicked, worldly, pseudo knowledge, false knowledge. No, he learned to stop and pause. They became beta male. What do you think? You think a low male. What do you think? They became Go ahead. Right? And the apostle stood behind Miriam. Now, now you see um, the theatrics. Yeah. He's learning this. Well, he's been speaking low all yes. The and, the mic. and yeah, dropping the mic, saying something, and having silence, mm -hmm. and whispering it. Well, we gotta speed it up. So it is speeded up. Oh, oh no, this is speeded up. Oh uh, yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. It's deception. It's it's witchcraft to the max, y'all. Go ahead. But she said unto Kepa, Kepa, thou chief, thou great pillar, standest thou behind us? Does she? Say, you know, I am a prophetess. You're talking to me. This is my time to rise up. I do have gifts. I am called and anointed, you know. Oh, yeah. That's what Jezebel does. That's what the worldly woman does. She would have taken that opportunity and emasculated the men. Miriam, the greatest of all the women, shows the example. She encouraged him in his moment of weakness. Jezebel will rip your heart out. Was there any weakness there? No. 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 <laughs> Wait. Right. First of all, they asked this woman a personal question about her own life and soul that they should already know by the testimony. Yahoshua's mama. Think about it. How dare you? They were scared to ask her according to this text, but they were scared because they knew that this was disrespectful. Right. Mm -hmm. So they in a weak moment. No. And if she would, if she said, right, if I tell you, I'm gonna call fire out of heaven. Okay. And so they keep harassing her. Yeah. Tell us the mystery. They in a weak moment. No. What is this? Our apostles behave this way? What? So now they're in a weak moment because they can't browbeat her into giving them the mystery of her? They are weak. They're in a weak moment because they can't browbeat her, 11 of them, to one, jump her into giving them the mystery of heaven Concerning her and her birth and their creator. Because they, because they, so they in a weak moment and she say, because what? All right, let me close. She trying to tell them no in a nice way. They not trying to receive it. First of all, I don't believe none of this, but let's go with the story. She's saying no in the most respectful way because what you're asking me it's not for you. You can't handle this. Right? They can't fathom this right now. Because they don't have the Holy Spirit. Did she have the Holy Spirit? Yes, obviously she had the Holy Spirit. <laughs> right? To carry a hosho in his womb. She had the Holy Spirit. They didn't. They're brown beating her into knowing a mystery. And she's wise enough not to get the mystery right now. Even though they may learn it later. They'll learn it later by whoever, because if she gives them the mystery, it's going to call fire to heaven. Now, do you believe that? Okay. But I'm going to tell you, there is some truth to this. I'm, I told you I got a mystery for y'all. <laughs> well, I'm not supposed to tell it. No, the prophets already told it. I ain't saying nothing that the prophets ain't already revealed. He who sees it will receive it. And he who doesn't won't. And it's not authorized by me. It's authorized by Yahushua. Okay? The word gonna go out and it's gonna accomplish where he set it for. To who is predestined. I can give you the mysteries all day long. You did I will never understand it. What you will do is burn your own behind. Now, this don't make no sense. His exegesis is this and eisegesis is this. Even if it was true, it don't make sense what he's saying is saying. They in a weak moment and then she said, let's pray. That sounds like righteousness. And they stand behind her. They become alpha beta male now. 
they in a weakness. And if she was to go ahead and pray, that would be demas what is what is it? Emasculating. Emasculating them? Please, brother speak. His hand like <laughs> go ahead. I know they don't. so you know when my brothers hear stupidity. They be like, oh, it's hard. I, I'm, <laughs> help me to hear this. Go ahead. I know, I know, I know. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm sorry, my brothers. Yes. They just soaking it up. He's appealing to broken men. Yeah. Now he want to talk about a, a ministry full of masculine women or full women for whatever what he's talking about, right? Right. But yet he wanted to get to you, Malcolm. He wanted to get to me. Like yeah, he, he, his feelings are hurt. Heart yeah, his heart got ripped out. It's scarred. It's all the, women. All it's the, all the women. women's fault because they I'm supposed to have them and they didn't submit to me. So um, I lost my point at the end of the day. I lost my point. All right, we're going to go ahead. We're going to go ahead. But uh, this don't make no sense. Ema look at the big words he used. This is emas demasculating you. Emasculating you for her to pray and you to stand behind her. Advocate his authority and his weakness. And his weakness. All right. And emasculate you. Take control. And then when she loses control, will blame the man for giving it to her in the first place. <laughs> That's why you never give your authority to Jezebel. Never. That's why you never give uh, your authority to Jezebel. So Mary would have became a Jezebel if she had a pray, and then she would have gotten in trouble. She would have called fire down from heaven. Their behinds would have got burnt because she prayed to see if I sh if they should have an answer. What was she praying for, y'all? According to the text. Whether she should give them the answer or not. They're browbeating her. Who's she praying to? Is she praying? She's so what would they be praying? Obviously, it would be her to pray if they're gonna browbeating her into making the decision that she's already been by the spirit led not to say. <laughs> and so now if she called fire out of heaven, watch, we're gonna read the rest. She gonna blame the men. Well, she could in this situation, right? Because this is harassment and they're, and they're usurping their authority. They're usurping the authority of Messiah that already told her, don't reveal that to them. Let the Holy Spirit reveal it in his time because they're not ready. They're not ready. This don't make no sense, y'all. Okay, go ahead. So, uh, so she would have became a judge. So according to this, Righteous Miriam, the mother of Yahushua, would have turned into the Jezebel spirit, the one that uh, that Yahushua already killed, like something like 25 days earlier, came would have came back. Ahab came back in the 12, in the 12, 11 apostles, and Jezebel spirit would have came back had she prayed. Huh? Now, based upon that text, if we find out later that she prayed and fire came down out of heaven, then his whole argument is lost. Then the righteous woman used her authority righteously. Wait a minute. Let's go. <laughs> because it's going to fall back on you either way. But at least you Now, this video is going to wind up being something like five hours. And most people won't watch it. So I will pick this out separately and put it up like I did last time. Right? Go ahead. God will be on your side. Hallelujah. Look okay. at this little boy with no hair on his face. Little uh, cub. Verse 7 again. And the apostle stood behind Miriam. But she said unto Kepha, Kepha, thou chief, thou great pillar, standest thou behind us. She's trying to teach him to en encourage him. I won't even say teach because the women are not supposed to even teach the man. But she encouraged him. You're the pillar, Kepha. Uh, Go ahead. Said not our Adonai, the head of the man is Hamashiach. And she quotes scripture. 
The head of the man is Hamashiach. Go ahead. Now therefore, stand ye before me and pray. Now you cover me. She reminds him of the godly order. She doesn't take and usurp the authority. She's the greatest of all women. That's the example. Go ahead. But they said that's what she's saying according to the story. No, you ask, nigga. <laughs> right? That's why are you asking me. Ask him. Right. 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 Go ahead. And then and he, the Yahweh said his tabernacle. So now they're still acting beta. Mm -hmm. They still acting beta. This man. And it was his good pleasure that thou shouldest contain them. And thou oughtest to be the leader in the prayer. And thou oughtest to be the leader in the prayer. You ever been in congregations where there's men there and then they want the woman to pray over the congregations? Have you ever seen that? Um, Never seen that? Mm -hmm. I've seen that. You got men who can say the prayers and so forth, but they choose, hey, sister, you lead us in the prayer. Now, what happened in here? What goes on in this assembly? Nah, brother. <laughs> don't leave. <laughs> Come on. Tell him what happens in here. I don't know what assembly is. The church does that, but there's nothing wrong with that, right? If the authority said, you pray, then listen to the authority. That don't make no sense. But in here, right, what happens? When we bless, pray, bring in the word, whatever, and do the Seder with the, the priest administrations and all that? Come, let them hear your raw lion alpha male voice. The very thing he would like to accuse me of not doing ain't never saw in here please tell them and if anybody in here believes that i'm lying this is your i mean this ain't live out me out now go ahead in this assembly <laughs> return of the jedi <laughs> the authority has the brothers to step up and to lead into the prayer and to lead into the seder and to lead into the opening of the scriptures for your information yes thank you is that the truth? Yes. And is that what I established as they finally learn, as I encourage them and they learn to step up in their place, right? Yes. Brothers, yes. have I not been teaching y'all from day one? I can't wait till you take your place. Is that not true? That I long for, to see y'all take your place. Did I just start speaking that because the guy is talking his foolishness? No. From day one. From day one. Time and place and order. And I'm going to show you what thus says Yah. All right, let's keep going. Now, if there's men there who don't know the word or might be new to the word, I, it's still not good. But I can even understand that more. But you. It's still not good. You mean these two? <laughs> now, if there's men there that is new to the word or don't know the word, I mean, I, I mean, it's still not good. It's still not good. Now, I want y'all to know um, that there's a I ain't, no names because it's not about a spy or anything. Somebody had that long left the dice ministry and fo followed him for years that knows his teachings very well. Uh, if you're willing to speak to say yes, what I'm saying is true or not, that's okay. I'm going to say it anyway, right? Jediah teaches this full, complete male ball authority regardless of who knows what. And there is a family or there was a group of elderly women. They in they, uh, we talking about all ages. We talking about women in their fifties and sixties and, and old grown mothers and grandmas. A small group of women came together and there was no men. They were following Jediah, but there was no one around. So when it came time to do it, Jediah wasn't on YouTube like he is every Shabbat and like that. He was he didn't have a ministry like that. They just following his teachings when he put them out. So what I was told, this is her testimony, but it's no, it's not what I was told. I was told about her testimony, but I heard Jediah teach. It. And he, he's going to come back to slowly as y'all ask for more come clean about what he really believes. And I've been telling y'all what he really believes is not what he's been teaching. He got y'all in his ministry now. He got y'all, he got the money, now he's gonna switch a rule on y'all. Back to what he really is, Satan. Um, he had he ordered this family, They it was a 21 year old or 20 year old, I could be wrong, 
somewhere around that age, new to the word. They was coming into this brand new and a 14 or a 16 year old. Don't quote me, but it was it was like that, that, that age category. And Jediah told them that they must leave the assembly and teach because they were men, the only men. Yeah, I know. And they told me that's exactly what was coming out their their mouths. These young men didn't know anything. They over here just searching the scriptures the day before, like baby, like trying to find a nipple. And a, a, a Jediah gave them man alpha authority with no Holy Spirit. And that goes completely against the clear word of Yah about babies in the word. To lead the prayer, to teach the lessons and give. And it was confusion. And then they told me that he went real off on his doctrine. And they was trying to show him that he might be off. And his arrogance was so high because of what your diet that they that they couldn't tell him nothing. He he was he was gone in his doctrinal ideology. And you couldn't reason with him or nothing. And this was the son. Are we talking about him giving the authority yeah. to shepherd over men's souls? Over men's souls, babies. We don't even know the life or the uh, conviction or the, the, uh, the righteousness of that, that baby mm -hmm. to even, even, even no, say that, that, anything. That's, that's those men are still being trained. Themselves. They still underneath their mama's rule. If they living in the house with their mama, who's the authority? Mama. Get the hell out of here, Jediah. What mama said, go. Unless mama is teaching you something against the word. If your grown behind male son is still living in your house, then you are, he's not the authority. And neither is no darn 16 year old or 17 year old. That's right. This fool don't even know nothing. Don't got hair on his face. And that's what he's doing with these young ones right here. Same thing. Corrupting them. No, he backpedals up, but that ain't good too, because that, that goes against his doctrine. Yeah. What he actually taught, he he doesn't want to do that because he's preparing to let go on y'all. He's preparing to tell y'all the whole truth. As y'all, as these people say, can you give a part two? Come on, I never heard it like this before. Man, now I totally understand Jezebel. Man, the testimony of Hosea was made clear to me now. Man, I was a beta male once too. Now I'm not. As people feed him with these lies, he's coming back. And he's gonna come. He's gonna come full out. He's gonna see how many men and women gravitate to these lying doctrines, and it is gonna empower him. But, but y'all, let's finish. Come on, I ain't even halfway through this lesson. Have situation. It's not even close to the case. Hey, sister, you lead us in the prayer. That's Ahab and Jezebel. You know it when you see it. If Mary's the mother of Yehoshua won't lead these men in prayer, how do you have these other sisters leading the men in prayer? Out of order. Out of order. Look how he's looking down at the sun. Say, do you believe me? Go ahead. Now, he just said, if Mary led them in prayer, she's out of order. And she's the Jezebel spirit, right? Right? Did, am I lying? We heard that, right? Okay, I'm a, I'm a pull. I think I might have to do this again and pull this out just by itself. Too much talking in between, right? All right, watch this. Go ahead, son. Where we at? We only in verse nine. Watch what he do, y'all. Verse nine. But she said unto them, Ye are shining stars. And as the prophet said, I did lift up my eyes unto the hills, from whence shall come my help. She quotes scripture again. Ye they come to her with the flesh. She come to them with the word, not her truth. Go ahead. Ye therefore are the hills, and it behooveth you to pray. She's encouraging them. You pray. Y'all the my covering. This is how I know that this ain't the word, this ain't true. I did lift my eyes unto the hills. What's the hill? Yahushua. From which shall come mine help. 
like I said, yeah, no, that's a prophecy about us calling up Yahushua from the mountains of Selah in the prophecy, not calling to man. You see how he's making the idol worship? He's replacing Yahushua's for man. Married it, but I'm telling you, this is all false, but let's keep going. Watch. Go ahead. Let's presume it's real. The apostles say unto her, thou wantest to pray. Thou and they still happen in Seth and Beta mode. Thou. Does she say, and take the authority now? Nope. Go ahead. Thou art the mother of the heavenly king. Mm -hmm. Miriam said unto them, and your likeness to Elohim for the sparrows. And sent them forth into the four corners. Watch what he do. Look what he do. What he just do. Oh. He zoomed out real quick. Let him finish reading and gonna stop him. Zoomed out real quick so you can't see it. And said, so "Let's go to somewhere else." Hold, hold, hold on one second. There's another hold on one second. Stop right there. Don't read no more. Yeah. Y'all didn't see this, right? He said, "Don't read no more." He zoomed out so y'all can't see what the end of the matter is and made his judgment. Stephanie Jackson just said, I didn't know this was out of order. Thank you, because I've been in Christian churches, and I see this all over here in St. Louis. Mm. And I thank you uh, for you and the Holy Spirit teaching me. Praise your Holy Spirit. See what I'm saying? I did not know this was out of order. Why? Because the Bible don't preach this. Uh -oh. Thank you for revealing to me the truth, because I've seen this in the Christian church. You do. And the Holy Spirit revealing this to me through you. You see what I'm saying? This is blasphemy. This dude is like all the way in hell already. Go ahead. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And no, no, um, post the scripture, Proverbs 31 and 3. Give not thy strength unto woman, nor thy ways unto that which destroyed kings. Mm. Proverbs 31, that's the, that's the proverb of the virtuous woman. That's a very powerful proverb that teaches our women with it beauty and strength and, and value lies. And at the very beginning, it tells that a man should not give his strength unto a woman because that will destroy him. So we're going to see another example of that here. In what does that mean? I know he don't speak like that. They don't know. They don't know that Jedi is a baby acting right now. But okay, don't give your strength to a woman means what? Giving your strength to a woman means you become weak, right? How do you become weak to a woman? No, but how? By you worshiping her vagina. That's how. You buy our people worship. And you worship the woman. Right? Chapter 4. So we're going to see these men trying to give the authority to the woman who is Miriam and her being righteous and godly. She, she rejects it and denies it. He's lying. He encourages them. He's lying on this lying script. And I'm going to prove it. Let's go. By using the word. Go ahead. Is that it on the comments? Gospel of Bartholomew, Bartholomew, chapter 4, verse 1. Chapter 4. Verse 1. And he took them and brought them again unto the Mount of Olives. Can you call and Kephar said unto Miriam. Yeah, it's on Kephar again. The head of the chief apostle. Mm -hmm. Here we go. Thou that art highly favored, entreat Yehoshua, that he will reveal unto us the things that are in the heavens. Now they're going to her mm -hmm. instead of going to their head. Yehoshua is their head and they're her head. Mm -hmm. But they're going beneath to go above. That's out of order. We can't go beneath to go above. Jezebel would relish that opportunity. Jezebel would say, why, yes, I am a prophetess. Why, yes. You don't even have to give birth to the Messiah. You can give birth to Pookie and Ray Ray. <laughs> well, yes, I have given birth to Elder Pookie and Bishop Ray Ray. So, yes, I am the prophetess. That's Pookie and that's Ray Ray right there. Go ahead. He's rebirthing them, y'all. Jezebel. Look what she says to Kepha. <clears throat> oh, stone hewn out of the rock. Did not Yehoshua build his church upon Did he build his assembly on you, Kepha? Why are you coming to me? You're my head. She can't respect that. How much more so if he's crying to her? How much more so? Go ahead. Go now, therefore, first. And ask Go him. second? First. And She's encouraging to go first. That's what a godly woman will do. Not usurp the authority. Not encourage him to that which will destroy him and eventually destroy her. She'll get to lead for however long she does, but it will end in her destruction. Demonic. Miriam, the greatest of women, Jehoshua, the greatest of men, 
They lead the example. We see in Mary. Go ahead. Yeah. Get by. Say it again. Old tabernacle that are spread abroad. Yeah, he trying to game her with these beautiful words. Mm. What does she come back with? Mary and say, thou art the image of Adam. Thou art the image of Adam. Not me. You, brother. Go ahead. Is that scripture? No. Nope. I just read it. They both was made in the image. Was not he first born and then Hawa? Mm -mm -mm. She got to take him back to Genesis. <laughs> <laughs> she got to bring him back to the first chapter of the book. And I had to take you back to the first chapter of the yeah. book. <laughs> yeah, you did, didn't you? Yeah. Now we're going to go back. We're going to continue. Mm -hmm. She got to take him back to the beginning. You got to read the book all over again. Can't find you missed something in chapter one. And so by reason of this, what's she doing? This whole this whole thing that he's trying to explain, she is not usurping authority. What's she doing? She's teaching Torah. If if what if this is true, according to the text, she's teaching them. She's quoting Torah and teaching them. Don't make no sense. Okay, go ahead. Go ahead. Look upon the sun, that according to the likeness of Adam, it is bright. And upon the moon, that because of the transgression of Kawah, it is full of clay. The sun is brighter than the moon in relation and proportion to the sin in the Garden of Eden. The sun is seven times brighter than the moon when it's full. Because Eve committed the sin first. So when a man is unclean, how long is he unclean for? When a woman is unclean, how long is she unclean for? The sin of Eve was seven times greater than that of Adam. That's a lie. Are you kidding me right now? <laughs> <laughs> Wait a minute. <laughs> Wait a minute. I just read it. Y'all. Man. First of all, I just read it. That's not true. Right? But when he's talking about a woman being, so he don't understand the curse, right? A man is unclean when, so uncleanliness is about blood being spilled and death being present. When a man dies and anybody goes to a dead body, how long are they unclean? Seven days, Seven days right? If somebody dies in the house, how long is the house unclean? Seven days. It's about death, right? Not that she dies. Right. Obviously, most of the time she lives longer. Right. So when a when a man spills his seed blood, it dies. How long is he spilling his seed seven days? Well, if he spilled it seven days out of the week, how many days is he unclean? If he's spilling his seed 30 days, how long is he unclean? Because it's about death and blood being spilled. So a woman is unclean for seven days. Because how long is she shedding her seed, which is blood? Seven days. That's all right. Y'all, I'm going to show. So so y'all saw that he was reading Barnabas 1 or 2. We're going to read it. Bartholomew 1 or 2. And then he zoomed out and went on. So it's not right there. I want to take you to chapter 4, right? We're going to read chapter. He's going to do the same thing, y'all. He's going to lie on the word. Watch this. Well, not lie on the word. He is lying on the word, but he's but he's lying on this word that he's telling you to believe, right? That's why Adam has to cover Eve. That's why Adam's prayer covers the woman. That's not the word. She, I'm going to show you again that is totally opposite of what Paul taught. He had direct relations with Satan himself. Adam had a relation with Eve who had a relation with Satan. So he's defiled, but she is. That don't make no sense. He ate the fruit. He was there. No, 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 no. The, if the relationship, if the relationship was eating the fruit, he ate the fruit. Then he had a relationship, <laughs> right? <laughs> with Satan too. But I'm telling you, as he say relationship, you know, he's playing with the term so he can switch your mind from what he just said what he taught a couple of weeks ago because he learned it through me 
right? That it wasn't sex. And I challenged him on that, right? As a troll, knowing that I can prove it because it don't say that nowhere, even in the books that he read, it tells you what it was. He refused, he, 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 he acknowledged it just to get you and he's going to play with the words so he can come back to this relationship type stuff. So what? So what's the relationship? She had sex with, it, with her husband? What, what, what are we talking about now, right? If she went to the source, so. Okay, you see how he, uh, do you see how he zoomed out right quick, right? We're gonna finish reading this so-called Bartholomew testimony of one, the righteous woman, and this so-called seven times greater sin of Howard and blame her for everything. We're gonna read the rest of what that say. And he gonna be busted again. Busted men of vagina, fat neck, fat check. All right. Um, I believe we stopping there. Now we're gonna, I'm gonna give a break and we're gonna come back. Y'all got anywhere to go? No. Let me uh let me pause this. Hold on. Okay, I'm back. I had to take a little break. This is gonna be a long one. So I'm gonna split this, I'm gonna keep this all together, but I'm gonna split it up. Like I did the last one to out him and to show him to be a liar, not weak, just a liar. Um, so he read Bartholomew one and zoomed out of that real quick and told the boy, stop right there. That's what the classic uh, Christian church do, Christian lying pastors. And um, he went to Bartholomew four. We're going to read that. Not just yet. Right. Uh, the gospel of Bartholomew. Here we go. Am I recording? Yes. Oh, I'm gonna have a lot to edit. <laughs> All right. Hold on, hold on. Let me do I need to read from the beginning? He he didn't do from one, he went from two, right? Huh? He read from two. Okay, yes, he read two and four. Okay. All right. So I'm in right now. Um, I was going to wait for my Tholomew, but because I'm going to pull this out separately, I guess I'm going to put it back to back. Um, Jediah, we just saw his claim and to his game and his fame. And um, it's all lies, y'all. Now, I'm going to repeat it again. If anybody, all these books, that canonical books that he read, I don't teach from those books. I do recognize that they do maintain the basis of the testimony of Yahushua. I do recognize that they teach esoteric teachings that man should not touch if they not settled in the spirit. And but I and but with that being said, um, I do not acknowledge the books because I don't because they were tampered with, and who they say and wrote them did not write them. There was just like the book of the Essenes. Um, that they were writing the book of the Nazarenes and all these other books that's floating around there with so strange doctrines that all these brothers are picking up, right? Um, these are counterfeits where they stole the testimony of Yahushua and rewrote the book for doctrines that they wanted to insert in there. Everything has to be tested against the word of Yah, the foundation and the principles of the beginning, even Paul's writings. If you believe in Paul, which it has already been stated that Paul's writings is hard to understand. And even with that being said, do y'all have all of Paul's writings? The letters, responses, and answers? No, there's missing pieces to Paul's letters that why y'all misinterpreting him. And if Paul is showing to say one thing here and saying another thing here, then you gotta either you gotta determine that Paul's writings false and hypocritical and contradictory, leave them alone, which I'm okay with that, but be careful because you just may not understand something or you're just misunderstanding, which is stated, it's stated from Peter's testimony that Paul's writings are difficult to understand and many that are unsettled in the word wrestle with what he's saying. Part of the problem is them not reading all of what he's saying. And when people do that, which I've taught y'all not to, you check me by the word. Right, you might see me put a here, here a little, there a little, but let every fact be established by two or three witnesses, right? And so this is him trying to get a second witness to a false witness that he's saying Paul said. We're gonna get to Paul. Was that my point? So once again, I don't adhere to these books. 
They are ex these books are people that is exegesis in and eisegesis things they want to fill in uh, according to their understanding. And there's fabricated stories in there that go against the testimony of the New Testament, the prophets, and, and the old. It goes against them. Right, there's laws and stuff and ideas in there that are true, and there's those that are not. And these books was not accepted in the canonical books or in any, it was not accepted. There may be a few scholars that accept these books, but the scholars are not the authorities, right? And most scholars reject this book because they dated it that it's impossible that Bartholomew wrote this to where it's dated. It's impossible that he wrote this. And they have written it off as a forgery. I'm saying it's a forgery, but for the sake of busting Jediah with his own club, let's say it's not. Okay? He just lied on his own testimonial books. Now let's read. Okay? Let's read. Okay, he started at two, right? Now the apostles were in, was in the place with Mary. And Bartholomew came and said unto Peter and Andrew and John, let us ask her that is highly favored how she conceived the incomprehensible. I just did this lesson, right? It's incomprehensible. You can never explain it, though I just did. And guess what? And only the righteous will understand it because we got to do it again, just like she did. Right? Or how she bare him that could not be carried. Or how she brought forth so much greatness, but they doubted to ask her. Why would they doubt to ask her, assuming that this is a real story? Because that's a disrespectful answer. The Bible already told you that she was an Alma, kept, chaste, virgin, pure in mind, heart, and body. And if these apostles knew the word of Yah, that's like. Nicodemus coming to Yahushua saying, when he said, you must be born, he said, can a man enter to the womb again? Right? And so he said, are you a Torah teacher? And you don't know these things? And I'm going to show you how Nicodemus asking that question is still immature in the word. Because it's, it's right. Like, I'm going to show you how Messiah be like, how could you ask me such a stupid question if you're a Torah teacher? Now, he believed in Yahushua, hallelujah. But he was asking questions that showed that he was un, not studied as he ought to be. Now, so where was that? Two, and Bartholomew came and said, unto people, okay. But they doubted to ask her. That is not weak. That is not beta. Uh, presuming this is true, the doubt is, they're asking her the incomprehensible and it's personal. Bartholomew therefore said unto Peter, thou art the chief and my teacher. Okay, so Bartholomew is the student of Peter and he asked that question. And my teacher, draw near and you ask her. So we got two, like, no, you ask her, no, you ask her. Okay, but Peter said to John, thou art a virgin and undefiled and beloved, and thou must ask her. <laughs> this is stupid. So John was not Peter, but John was the virgin. He was a eunuch, undefiled. That was the answer right there, but okay. And as they all doubted and disputed, and they was disputing, Bartholomew came near unto her that's what that's what those, those uh was it was they said every dispute between men is over a woman, right? <laughs> but Bartholomew came near unto her with a cheerful countenance and said to her, first of all, this is deception. This is not this is this is deception. Um, that's not how we're supposed to deal with each other. Come straight. So he come in to flatter her to get something. This is already of the flesh, right? Thou art highly favored. Hear ye, hear ye, da, 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 da. right? The tabernacle of the most high. She's the tabernacle of the most high. She can't pray in it, right? You, you see this? Unblemished we, 
Even all the apostles, ask thee, of all the apostles have sent me to ask thee, to tell us how thou didst conceive the incomprehensible, or how didst thou bear him that cannot be. Now, I want y'all to know, this is supposed to be after his resurrection, the 40 days before they came and received the Holy Spirit of testimony of Yahushua, right? This is, this is, above is Yahushua visiting them, and Bartholomew, whoever wrote this, is attempting to fill in what, what these conversations of Yahushua coming and visiting all the apostles and saying. So chapter one, you see Yahushua talking to him. Okay. As you, and as they all doubted, and I said that, right? Mm -hmm. But Mary said unto them, ask me not, or, did you, or do you indeed ask me concerning this mystery? Right? If I should begin to tell you, fire will issue forth out of my mouth and consume all the world. Did he read that part? Nah, I could have sworn he skipped that part, but maybe. All right. Nah, I didn't hear consume all the world. This, that's a big claim. What? Y'all believe that? Y'all believe that? That if she was to tell you the mystery of the conception of Yahushua, that fire will come out of her mouth and consume that. That's not, she's saying this is the end of the world. Now, there's a mystery in what is being said here. Like I said, whoever wrote this is writing some esoteric things, but they're writing it through falsehood, uh, uh, tales. I'm going to show you the concept of whoever wrote this is trying to say, but this is not true. This conversation is not true. Though there's something in it that he's saying, this is not true. Don't believe this. Mary saying the mystery, her saying the, the mystery, right? Issue is a uh, fire is going to issue forth out of her mouth and consume all the world. She got that kind of power. That's against the world, the word. But I'm going to show you Mary representing what? The bride of Yahushua and the mother that's supposed to birth him. It is true as a whole. I said, I got a mystery to show you and no fire is not going to come out my mouth when I say it, but it is going to burn Jediah's heart because he want to know. But they continued yet the more to ask her and she for. And, and she, for she could not refuse to hear the apostle said, let us stand up and pray. That's her taking leadership. And the apostle stood behind Mary. Makes sense. But she said unto Peter, thou art chief, thy great pillar standeth thou behind us. Did he stand behind Mary or did he stand behind all the other apostles as well? It wasn't just her. It was us. Right. So he's messing with the story right there. He may have stood behind Mary, but Mary wasn't in the front. <laughs> Either they was in an array, a line, or some of them was in the front and he was in the back. According to the story, he might have been the most fearful. Who knows? So she looking at Peter like, why are you all the way back there? Get, come up here. Right. How many times haven't that happened to us? I'm like, y'all, why y'all back? Come on up here, right? Okay, so that's not no beta stuff, right? That's not, what is that? Okay, so she's, so now she go, uh, you are the great pillar standing down behind us. Who's the us? The other apostles. He's lying on the script. Said not our master, the head of the man is Messiah. Now, therefore, stand ye before me and pray. But they said unto her, in thee did the master, Yahweh, set his tabernacle. Now they give him accolades back. No, you. No, you the glory. No, you the glory. No, you the glory. No, you the head. No, you the authority. No, you. No, you. Okay. Okay, let's just all pray together in a circle. How about that? <laughs> right? So let's see. He said, 
that she would have been a Jezebel. And he's what he said. He stopped. Did he stop right there with my? I gotta say the numbers because I can't see. I'm at nine. No, I'm at eight. But they said unto if if the in the in the in the did Yahweh set his tabernacle, and it was his good pleasure that thou should have contained him, and thou oughtest to be the leader in the prayer. And something is to go with us to do whatever. Okay, that's what Peter said. Well, if he's the authority and they discussed the matter and she said, no, you, and he said, no, you, then that should have been the end of the matter, right? And what should have happened after that? If he's the authority, right? He just gave her the authority. What's your problem? Okay. But she said unto them, ye are the shining stars. <laughs> And as the prophet said, I did lift my eyes unto the hill from which shall come my help. That's a prophecy of Yahushua coming, Yahweh in his glory coming from the hills of Selah. Ye therefore are the hills and it, be, it behooveth you to pray. This is a lying um, exegesis uh, midrash. It's li that's a lie. That's not what the prophecy says. Okay, but let's believe it. So she goes back, you are the shining star. I thought the whole house of Israel was shining star. Okay, so this don't make no sense. And she's the tabernacle, but we all are supposed to be the tabernacle, right? This is man worship right here. No, you, huh? That's where he stopped, y'all. Let's finish, right? So if, let's see if she's a Jezebel or not. The apostle said unto her, thou order to pray. Thou art the mother of the heavenly king. Mary said unto them, in your likeness did Elohim form the sparrows and send them forth into the four corners of the world. That's, that's different than what he read, right? Oh, he didn't read. He stopped that. And he went to another thing, right? He said, so Mary said, in your likeness, Elohim formed the sparrows and sent them forth into the four corners of the world. Where, what is that? It's probably talking about the spirit, like a bird. But it sent them to the four corners of the world in your likeness. Like I made you like the clouds. I don't know. Like the birds of the cloud. What? What? But they say unto her, he that is scarce contained by the, and something is missing, right? Then Mary stood up before them and spread out her hands towards the heaven and began to speak thus. I'm not reading this because this could be some kind of a uh, spell right? And this is the reading of one Greek copy and the others, is, they got a Greek copy and a Slavic has many differences as in all such cases, meaning that they can't be confirmed. Uh, but as the original words, assuming them to have once had a meeting are hopelessly corrupted. Whatever she's saying is just an unknown language. This could be some abracadabra voodoo hoodoo, right? You, you'd be surprised to die over here saying this stuff, right? Um, the matter is not of importance. Whatever she said is not important, right? Which in the Greek tongue, Hebrew Slavic, oh, so this is what they come up with. The Greek Slavic, uh, the, the Slavic, I guess, interpretation, or I don't know. Oh, Elohim, the exceedingly great and all wise and the king of the worlds of the ages that are not to be described, the ineffable, ineffable, that did establish the greatness of the heavens and all the things by a word that out of darkness or the unknown did constitute and fasten together the poles of heaven in harmony. Did it bring into shape the matter that was in confusion? Did it bring in order the things that were without order? Did it part the misty darkness from the light? Did, did it establish in one place the fountains of the water? Thou, um, thou that maketh the beings of the air to tremble and art the fear of them that are on under the earth that dideth settle the earth and not suffer it to perish and filleth it, which is the nourisher of all things. With showers and blessings, son of the father, thou whom the seven heavens hardly contain, but who, who was well pleased to be contained without pain in me. Curse undone, right? Thou art thyself the full word of the father in whom all things came to be give glory to thy exceedingly great name and bid me to speak behold before 
thy holy. That's what the prayer was all about. Why wouldn't she pray it? Y'all are harassing her to give an answer that she says, if I say this, it's going to call fire out of heaven. And he said, okay, let's pray. It would behoove her to pray because they asking her to go against her better knowledge. And when she had ended the prayer, she began to say unto them, now, he's done. He lied. He lied. She's a Jezebel. She usurped authority. She's out of order. She's going to hell. What? What? See how Jedi is a liar? Okay. 14. And when she had ended the prayer, she began to say unto them, let us sit down upon the ground. Look at how crazy this is. He know he didn't want to read this just yet. Let us sit down upon the ground. Now she's directing them again. And come thou, Peter, the chief, sit on my right hand and put thy left hand beneath my armpit. It's like, well, let's sit down and hold each other side by side. And thou, Andrew, do so on my left hand. And thou, John, the virgin, hold together my bosom. What? <laughs> hold together my bosom. I don't know if he just put his hands on his stomach, right? And thou, Bartholomew, set thy knees against my back and hold my shoulders. What? Can y'all imagine this? What this look like? They. <laughs> yeah, this this Catholicism, voodoo voodoo, y'all, right? But watch this. That's why he didn't want to read this. Because if you read this, they would have burned Jediah. Blasphemy, right? <laughs> right. Hold. Uh, put your knees against my back and hold my shoulders. <laughs> Lest when I begin to speak. My bones be loosened one from another. <laughs> All right. That be the Holy Spirit coming through her. Okay. The Holy Spirit can, can, okay. And when they had so done, she began to say, oh, now, so she prayed. I guess she got her answer. Yeah, Osho said, it's okay. I can call fire out of heaven and end the world. When I abode in the temple of Elohim and received my food from an angel, on a certain day, there appeared unto me one in the likeness of an angel, but his face was incomprehensible. And he had not in his hand bread or cup, and did the and as did the angel which came to me aforetime. And straightway the robe veil of the temple was rent, and there was a very great earthquake as she began to speak. And I fell upon the earth. Oh, no, oh, she's telling the story. For I was not able to endure the sight of him. This is not her testimony, y'all. But he put his hands beneath me and raised me up and I took up in the heaven and there came a cloud of dew and sprinkled me from the head to the feet and wiped me with his robe and said unto me, hail, thou art highly favored, chosen vessel, great and exhaustible. And he smote his garment upon my right hand and there came a very great loaf of bread and he set it upon the altar of the temple and did, and I, and, and did eat of it first himself and gave me also. And again, he smote his garment upon the left hand, uh, right, left. That's a you, that's a okay. And there came a very great cup full of wine and he set it upon the altar of the temple and did drink of it first himself and gave also unto me. And I beheld and saw the bread and the cup whole as they were. And he said unto me, yet three years, I will send my word unto thee and then shall conceive my or a son, and through him shall the whole creation be saved. Peace be unto you. And when he had so said, he vanished away from my eyes, and the temple was restored as it had been before. And as she, now they're exegesis the high spiritual thought about what's already written in the testimony. And she was saying this, as she was saying this, fire issued out of her mouth and the world was at the point to come to an end but Yahushua appeared quickly 
uh, the Latin and laid his hands, the Latin says, and laid his hands upon her mouth. Pray no more, Mary. And said unto Mary, utter not this mystery, or this day my whole creation will come to an end. The Latin too says, and the flame from her mouth ceased, and the apostles were taken with fear, lest happily Yahweh should be wroth with them. I don't have a mic to drop, but we ain't done. So the mic ain't dropping. I'm still talking now. He skipped all of this. It's probably some crazy stuff because I already know. I, like, I ain't read this whole thing, but I already know that it's crazy stuff in it. I think years ago, I might, my eyes might have skipped past some of this stuff. This is the book that he also used to attempt to prove that you can have more than one wife and skip past the fact that he said, but it's better to be celibate. Right? Okay, so he went to four. So we see that just happened. According to Jediah, She's a Jezebel, they're beta men, and they go into hell, all right? Uh, she had no respect, no honor of authority, and this is a lie. Don't y'all want to beat the hell out of him yeah. for lying? Cause, no, because this lie is, is y'all, this is dangerous. He is forming, creating, manifesting, and shaping the minds of young men and young women, and broken men and broken women, right? And he's a false scribe, yeah, false scribe. Mm -hmm. Totally. All right, we're going to go to four, right? He read that, right? And then he zoomed out real quick. Let's read it. And he took them and brought them again unto the Mount of Olives, right? And Peter said unto Mary, Thou art highly favored, entreat Yahweh that he will reveal unto us the things that are in the heavens. Now they, that don't make no sense. Now they're going to ask her another question. He's right there talking to him. He coming and going, coming and going in these 40 days. And they still, who's writing this? This is the Catholic church to worship Mother Mary. And the funny thing is, is that how could Jediah hate women so much and read this book? Because this actually is female worship. It's, fe it's doing opposite of what he thinks it's supposed to do, right? All right. So after they was afraid for harassing her the first time and fire it shit out of her mouth, they're going to ask her the things that are in heaven? What, did she go to heaven? Okay. And Mary said to Peter, a stone hewn out of the rock did not Yahweh build this assembly upon thee go thou therefore first and ask him after what just happened she was like look go and ask him stop asking me questions why would she say go and ask him because he was there right peter said again old tabernacle that i'll spread abroad mary said thou art the image of adam thou art the image of adam Who's the image of Adam? That's not even scriptural. Thou art the image of Adam. What does that mean? You see, wait, when he read it, didn't it sound like he read and Adam was made in the image of Elohim? That's not what he said. He said, thou art the image of Adam. You are in the image of man. Was not he first formed? Now, and then Eve, this is truth. I'm going to go back and I'm going to make, because in the book it said, Adam was created first and then Eve. Adam was not created first and then Eve. They was created at the same time. He was formed first, built, and then Eve, right? Look upon the sun that according to the likeness of Adam, it is bright and upon the moon. So once again, first of all, Thou art the image of Adam is true, but that's not Genesis. That's not. So he read it like it was saying, like Adam was Yahushua. Like the image of Adam is not Elohim. Adam is made in the image of Elohim. And he's look upon the sun that is according to the likeness of Adam. It is bright. And upon the moon. This is also idol worship. But Okay that because of the transgression of Eve, it is full of clay. For Elohim did place Adam in the east and Eve in the west. 
and appointed the light that the sun should shine on the earth unto Adam in the east and in the fiery chariots and the moon in the west should give light unto Eve with a countenance like milk. What is that? That's a lie. So she only gets moonlight, he gets sunlight. Shut up. Stop. And she defiled the commandment of Yahweh. Therefore was the moon stained with clay. The Latin says became cloudy. And her light is not bright. So his sun remained sunny and the moon just got dimmer. Well, that would say that they were equal first, right? Right, but that don't make no, yes. Thou therefore, since thou art the likeness of Adam, ought to ask him. Now, he should ask him. But in me was he contained that I might recover the strength of the female. You know, he stopped right there about um, the sin, right? The foulment of the sin. He stopped right there and zoomed out. Why? Watch. Because it says, and he stopped the young man from finishing the sentence. He said, stop right there, right? I believe he, that's what he stopped right there and zoomed out. It says, but in me was he contained that I might recover the strength of the female. What that mean? According to this text. The curse is over. <laughs> It's over. The curse is over. It says she should bear childbirth in pain. Up, up top, she said, I had childbirth without pain. No sin in me. I birthed salvation. I birthed the seed that was going to go against what? Jezebel? I birthed the seed that was going to step on the head of the serpent. So now she recovered the strength of the female. Jediah wouldn't like that. If I was teaching this, what they would call me? They would be quick to dismantle this book and call me a feminist. But I don't believe in this at all. I don't believe in this at all. The strength of all of man is recovered through the Holy Spirit. Right? Now, when they came up to the top of the mountain, the master, Yahushua, was withdrawn from them a little space. So Yahushua was right here. And Peter said to Mary, thou art she that has brought to naught the transgression of Eve, changing it from shame into joy. It is lawful, therefore, for thee to ask. There's truth in that statement, but I don't believe in that, this story. Like I said, Whoever wrote this is trying to impart esoteric spiritual higher teachings in a, in a false way. And that kind of stuff is dangerous for a man to read and is dangerous for a woman to read if they don't understand what this is saying. Absolutely. If he, but why are we talking about Eve? Brought the transgression of Eve? It all... Okay, we're going to get the scripture on that, right? Changing it from shame to joy, it is lawful, therefore, for thee to act. So if Jediah was to read the rest of this, there's no more sin on the female. I don't see where anything is lifted off the man, though. But according to this, Howard does not bear the sin any longer. So where did Jezebel come from? And why are we still blaming Eve? Jediah, you're a hypocrite, you're a liar, and you're a liar on top of a lie. Okay. Do I want to read any more? Then it goes on, and this is just like last. Uh, this is just crazy where, um, where Bartholomew is actually Yahushua to uh, reveal uh, Satan to him, right? He want, he's asking them to uh, uh, reveal the adversary to him. And Yahushua was like, no. And he like, please. And Yahushua was like, no. And he's like, please. And so Yahushua goes and say, okay, go ahead. So Bartholomew, go ahead to go speak to the devil. This don't make no sense, right? Y'all can read this, see if I'm telling a lie, right? <laughs> right, and then Bartholomew goes forward to talk to the devil, to get the mystery of the, why would he 
right, of Belier, the neck of Belier, right? Why would he tell him to go talk to Belier and get mysteries from heaven from Satan? But before he goes, he gets scared as he's approaching Satan and goes back and tells Yehoshua, can I borrow your mantle to protect me because I'm scared to go question him? But you, this don't make no, Bartholomew is a, and then is a long conversation with Satan and Satan is revealing, um, man, mysteries. Okay, he's talking about the archangels and who formed who first, and he's giving and the uh, six angels, the seven angels. This Satan talking, right, to Bartholomew and and and, and Belier answered and said, "What? Yahushua allowed him to go speak to the devil, the lie, and get mysteries from him." And, and 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 he's revealing the the first heaven, the third heaven, all of this, and the myriads and giving names. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, y'all done with that? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Let me pause. Hold on. All right. Are we clear now? Stay tuned. There's more to come. Eight hours of it, and I'm not done. Shalom, shalom.